So, today I'm just doing a sound demonstration of several of the guitars going over several different types because, first off, I think it's cool the way they have different sounds to them, but also because it'll give everybody an idea side by side what several different guitars sound like and the types that they are. This right here is the Harmony Montclair. We've talked about it a couple of times on this channel. The guitar is a late 40s, early 50s era arch top that is an F hole that has had a piezo system added to it. So this guitar in amongst itself started off life as an acoustic, but has been modified to use a piezo system as the sound for, uh, form of amplification for it. So you can plug it into any amplifier. In this particular case, we're gonna plug all of them into the Fender 68 twin reissue. So with that in mind, it will sound. <laughs> louder than if it was just but interestingly enough the piezo doesn't give it all that different of a sound it just amplifies it on this guitar which I think is actually a pretty good deal That's like I say, but this is a piezo system, and you can get them pretty much for any guitar nowadays. And there's even some electric guitars, like for instance, the Wino Les Paul Custom that Gibson did, that has Jerry Cantrell's that has a piezo system in the bridge. So, like I say, piezo systems are not new. This one's been on this guitar since the 90s. So this is not even like a brand new ultra well made one. This is just a generic one that was added to this guitar around 94, 96, somewhere in that era. So it's been around for about 25 ish years. With that in mind, it definitely gives it a lot of flexibility that you would not normally get. And again, I don't really mind the sound. Interestingly enough, I'm facing the amp right now, which, because this come, came up just recently, this amplifier to keep the feedback down, I generally keep in the four range. It will go louder, but generally everything we do in here is about 100 decibels or less, maybe as much as 110. So if you're ever wondering what the sound of the amplifiers is in the room, we are probably less than 100 decibels at all times. 
And it's nothing more than the fact that the acoustics of the shop are absolutely that of an open reverberating chamber. So realistically, not the greatest setup when it comes to sound for performances. But it gives us the ability to do all kinds of things like move around and take things wherever we want to go. So. But I really like this guitar because it gives a lot of the same feelings of an electric guitar, even though it's got 12 gauge acoustic strings on it, which also gives it a different sound through the piezo. And it just, as a hollow body guitar, it's different. So like I say, arch top and arch back on this guitar. So it's not like a standard acoustic. It is actually more like the Gibson like L series, I think is what they are. That are the guitars that have arch top, arch back, but have the cutaways on them. I think that's the L series guitars that Gibson did, but like I say. So again. <laughs> So now, let's compare that to something else. So now we move to a semi-hollow. Now this one, of course, has 335, uh, real basic construction, same overall shape-ish because it does have an arch top and it does have an arch back, but it is different because it has the slab down the middle. So it gives it a similar but different sound because even though it's made out of the same laminate material that is brought together in the to create layers of laminate, it has that middle piece to help minimize the feedback. So this one is set in the middle with everything to 10 all the volumes, all the tones set to 10 so that it's not something unfair to the to the piezo system on the acoustic. And it has Again, this one has humbuckers and there's two of them. If I just brought it up to the neck, it would be pretty similar to what we just heard. And 
just for the giggles of it because there's a obviously the piezo is built into the bridge the bridge system would sound <laughs> I feel like this guitar excels at its middle position. And if you notice, it really does have in its middle position kind of a sound that doesn't mimic what the acoustic does with the piezo, but it gives it that kind of open sound. The piezo really does have a little more treble, but that's also because you can't turn anything down. There's no settings adjustment on that. That is just however, whatever it senses that the strings are reverberating at. So, semi-hollow sound. I really like semi-hollow bodies. I'm surprised that I didn't, it took me this long to get up by a 335. I was, I've played several of the casinos and Sheridans and liked them. And I've even picked up a couple of 335s over the years. And I don't know, I just didn't fall in love with one until just recently and this one popped up and i gotta tell you i'm a huge fan this one is way better than i thought it was going to be i was not nearly as expecting as much as i did as i got and i like the fact that it's unique because of the aged over emblem and you know gibson logo so the crown and the gibson have that same toner that is brought on to the binding and everything to give it a aged look, which they call it dark tobacco burst, but it really does look like a vintage burst that's just been aged over with a satin with a satin finish. So anyway, a couple more riffs and then on to the next. <laughs> Thank you. 
So now, on to a modern. <laughs> and when I say modern, this actually is Les Paul Modern. So this one is the Les Paul Modern, and it is a chambered weight relief guitar that is an electric. And so it's not semi hollow, but it is chambered. So it is not a guitar that. So if you took it apart, it would have weight reliefs inside there to increase to make it where it doesn't weigh as much. And you can't really see it, but it's also got a weight a car that's been taken away here. So it has really been changed like versus the original like solid mahogany body guitars that Les Pauls were known for, for being in the early 50s and probably a little bit later on than that too but they and they they do still make a few and we'll play one that is a solid body even now but this one like I say has a modern weight relief so it has a different sound because it is chambered and versus like a tribute or a special, it is not going to have the same sound. It's just different. That said, this guitar is a modern and it has a lot of different feelings and one of the feelings is the neck is definitely thinner and it is so easy to just wrap your hand straight around like this is a shredder guitar and I'm not a shredder but I really like the color of this guitar because it's just awesome and you can see the reflection and everything so it is absolutely 100% a looker, but it also has that same basic sound. However, it's got a little different. There's a little bit of difference between it and everything else. And one of the things that I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to play it with the humbuckers and then I'm going to split the coils because it's supposed to be the equivalent of a P90. So I'll give you an idea as this guitar with P90s, or the P90, I want to use the quotes for that, P90 sound engaged. So the next two guitars will be a little more fair. But right now, we'll just go with the humbuckers and then swap over to P9 sound.
see what's next. So now, the reason that I wanted to play the P90s becomes that I wanted to make sure and show what a intonatable tail tailpiece, you know, bridge, intonatable bridge with the stop bar tailpiece is like with P90s on a guitar that still has a little bit of a raise to it, so it's not a slab by itself, it actually still has a cap on it. So this guitar has a real thin maple cap on the top of it, and I don't know if you can see the edge of it right there, but there is just a little bit on there, it might be more visible on the top side. See right there, you can see the difference between the two pieces of wood. That's maple versus mahogany. And I believe these 60s tributes do not have a, any kind of weight relief on the bodies themselves. This one certainly doesn't, feels like it's heavy enough that it doesn't. But it is not, doesn't have a lot of the other appointments that the Les Paul Classics, Moderns, Standards, standard 50s these are, these tributes are a little bit a little bit less guitar and like i say this particular one has become kind of a fan favorite of the, of the channel because of it's just so good to play but sounds good and has a really rich tone that only p90s really can deliver in a les paul through that amplifier, that 68 reverb, twin reverb reissue just has a sound that I love. I am almost positive whoever decides when we get to a thousand subscribers, there's somebody that will probably choose to this guitar and I will have to let it go. And I'll be very sad because I really like this guitar. And it was modified, like I say, by the Gibson, uh, demo shop guys which also were responsible for the mod collection guitars so it has got a wonderful feel to it and i don't know if all of them play like this or if it's just this one but it uh it's definitely nice and i i have nothing but respect for these guitars i thought they were just cheap les pauls when they were made this one i think is a 2016 model Yep, 2016 model, and it just, like I say, it has changed my perspective of what the 60s tributes are. But anyway, bottom line is, this is what it sounds like on the rhythm pickup. And more 
look into what the bridge, the piezo on the harmony sounds like. Oh. Did I lose something here? problem with one of the circuits. Or not. Could just be a hot, dead spot in the pot. On to the next one. And now for what is absolutely the last type of guitar, and this is the 100% flat everything, just a slab of guitar SG. These guitars have no weight relief. They have no changing uh, to the bodies. You can see that this one has a body seam right here. I don't know if you can, I can make that pop up in there. And then I thought it had another one right over here. So this is a, at least a two piece and I believe three piece back. And there is no, uh, there's nothing else. It's just a three piece body. It's painted so it's really hard to find, but they are, oh yeah, there's that piece. Uh, maybe this is just a two piece piece body, but no matter how you look at it, these guitars are just as plain as it gets. There's no special weight relief. There's no changing to them. They are the anti, the complete opposite of where we started with this, which, like I say, was with a guitar that had nothing but laminate top back sides no solid anything created a lot of feedback reverberated a lot because it was just an acoustic guitar with a piezo pickup but there are, like i say there are other guitars that are very similar to that that like the l series guitars from gibson that share a lot of those same traits but this guitar has just a little bit different sound than even the tribute with the P90s in. pickup it smoothed it out a little bit and on the 
strange pickup, it sharpens it a little bit. But the sweet spot really is kind of there in the middle. opposite of where we started off with this one. So acoustic with piezo versus slab body with P90s. And a P90 really kind of is pretty close to a P, what would be a piezo setup, though it doesn't touch the strings like the piezo setup does, so therefore they're not exact, the two aren't exactly the same, but there's no humbucking on a piezo. There's no special uh, sauce that it goes through to stop it from doing anything. It's just a regular old sound. And that's kind of what the P90 does, except it does it in a much higher capacity. So at the end of the day, that's what all of them sound like. This is a long video, so thanks for bearing with us, and I hope you all enjoyed it. It was so fun to do all the different sounds, so until next time.